Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. A very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizit. On Spectrum tonight, what else for Uganda? Dr. Martin the Golden Jubilee. How do we move forward, considering the past and our desired destiny? The Golden Jubilee celebrations came to climax day at Kololoya Strip, where a ceremony was held to mark the 50 years of independence, following other week-long activities that included national prayers. The 50 years Uganda has gone through, have been described by some as a missed opportunity, with many lamenting that the, uh, about the turmoil and uncertainty that has characterized the country. In what could be his shortest uh, speech ever, shortest independent speech ever, President Museveni indicated that the bad days are over and that Uganda will certainly be a first world country in the next 50 years if it focuses on agriculture, manufacturing, its human resource, tourism and the service industry. President Museveni stressed that past bottlenecks like ideological disorientation, tribalism, illiterate army leadership, failure to support the private sector, an unskilled workforce, poor infrastructure, small internal markets, lack of industrialization, the underdeveloped service sector, unstructured agriculture, and the lack of democracy are now being solved. He added that the discovery of oil and gas will help transform Uganda faster, stressing that the NRM has achieved a lot and the plan is to do even better now. Some people have suggested that President Museveni's speech fell far short of expectations. A dozen heads of state attended the ceremony, which was also cut by performances, including a display by military helicopters and jets flying overhead. So tonight we seek solutions to challenges not in the 50 years, as we also analyze the events and statements issued as we commemorate this day. Our guests tonight, retired Ambassador Harold Echema, former Ugandan diplomat, now a consultant on international affairs. You're most welcome, Ambassador Echema. Thank you, Edmund. We are also joined, uh, we expect to be joined by Honorable Mike Sebalu, Ugandan representative at the East African Assembly, also a member of the NRM National Executive Committee. We expect him to join us shortly. We've right now just been joined by uh, Re uh, Honorable Yena Kanyomuzi, former minister in Milton Obote's government and uh, also a former representative at the East African <coughs> Legislative Assembly. You're most welcome, Honorable Kanyomuzi. Good evening. Uh, Ambassador Chema, could we have been done better than we actually have in the 50 years we've been independent? Thank you, Edmond. Let me start by expressing congratulations to the people of Uganda for this uh, historic day. I don't want to say that we have celebrated, but at least we have marked a historic day. And uh, what a day it was, a bright, hot day, which ended up with showers. It's, type of like, it's, it's like the Chinese dish, sweet and sour day. <laughs> so but, also chicken and also. <laughs> but all the same, um, I think this is a day we've been looking forward to. And today is the Golden Jubilee uh, of the Republic of Uganda. And of course, Jubilee is uh, a religious concept. Uh, Jubilee entails restoration, atonement, and renewal. And in this regard, I want to thank the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Henry Lukorombi, and the Mufti of uh, the uh, brothers of the Islamic faith, Ramadan Mubaji, <coughs> for the very pertinent and powerful prayers which they um, made for our country, our people, and all of us. I hope that uh, all of us will internalize that powerful message uh, especially the element of uh, forgiveness, repentance, because without forgiveness, because a lot has gone wrong in our country, and I think especially our leaders, they owe it to Ugandans, but above all, they owe it to God, 
all of us will be accountable to God. So I think that element of repentance is was very, very pertinent. To come to your question, yes, we could have done better. We should have done better. If you compare Uganda with countries which achieved independence, same time like us, Singapore, um, uh, Malaysia, uh, even that time South Korea, they were both in more or less, you know, similar uh, stage like Uganda. But today, the economically, economically, yes. But today, the the, the 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 gap is so wide. So definitely, we could have done better, and we are capable of doing better. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. So, well, pick up from your own words, atonement and repentance. Where do you think we missed it? A weapon? Why did we miss it? Well, you see, a lot has gone wrong, you know, mismanagement, incompetence, uh, some of it lack of experience. My senior colleague here, Honorable Yonasana Kanyamuz, I'm sure he can speak with more authority, because at independence I was in S2, I was only 15 years old. <laughs> But I remember vividly what happened. In fact, there was so much euphoria. There was so much hope in Uganda. And um, in fact, if there are any countries in Africa where the colonial power had a lot of hope, it was Ghana and Uganda. You know, Ghana in West Africa, Uganda in East Africa. These were the two countries in which there was a lot of hope. And I think there's still a lot of hope in these two countries. So it's not um, by accident that uh, Her Majesty the Queen has sent the Duke of Kent for the second time to come and witness today's event. So the challenge is really for us, on us, to live up to those expectations. <coughs> All right. All right. Of course, the Queen gave us the independence on uh, the Duke's birthday, which uh, oh. was a good thing, yeah. uh, probably, apparently. Yeah. Um, but, um, can you know, can you were a minister in Milton, but it's government. Don't no, one government. No. Don't put it to government. No, I, w I was a student. <laughs> Talk to us about... At the time of independence, I was just 21. I just turned 21, actually. And uh, I was... <coughs> Independence found me in America, actually, and I went to Greensboro, New Jersey, which had a program through Columbia University with McKinney, then McKinney was the university, and, um, and that's where Independence found me, and at the stroke of midnight, we all stood up in our councils and sang the national anthem, which was given to us on pieces of paper. Well, we sang it very well. <laughs> we were hearing what was going on but through BBC, overseas service. So, I was a student. But let me say one thing. I was... Uh, I'm happy. That we have Let's get that fact right. You were a minister in the second... Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <coughs> I started being a minister in the second... In, in, in the UNLF. Right. Oh, yeah. That's true. You know. So, uh, from 79 up, up to beyond. And uh, Milton's, uh, which is government, uh, government was formed when it was already Minister of Cooperatives. Right. Minister of Cooperatives. Talk to us about your own expectations of independence. And uh, we expected much. <coughs> first, first, we expected we were going to move. And the initial years actually moved. Oh, yes. The growth rate in this country was always above 6 and 6%. The, the, and we were using our own resources. Up to 1972, the public debt, yesterday they were talking about the public debt, which is now in trillions of shillings, of shillings and billions of dollars. of dollars. By that time, we did all we did, this country did with less than 553 borrowed money. Million pounds. Dollars. Million dollars at that time. Yes. And the dollar was seven shillings, I think, at that time. Yeah. So we 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 we, we start to go very well. In the productive sector, I will take cotton. We reached the highest level and we haven't achieved it. We haven't. We were selling about seven hundred bales of cotton. Actually about 445,000 bales in 1965 66. Yeah. That was the peak. Yeah, you know, the peak was actually in the 70s. 
Oh, really? Mm. Uh, we were, we were the, the, our Ugandan coffee, especially the pasta, was the standard coffee on the commodity market in New York. Our uh, co copper and the other things were booming. We were going straight on. And the first government of Obote, or the first government of Uganda, independence government, moved in the right direction. It moved in production, it moved in infrastructure, it moved uh, in, in uh, uh, service, delivery. service delivery. So the things were on, 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 track. on track, except we got distracted. First, they were small, not small, they had the disruption internally because of the structure of the or, uh, independence ordinance or the constitution of the day. It had conflicts, and I'm sure if you read, uh, if you had uh, Mrs. Joyce Banga on Kubukede today, she was analyzing. The, 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 the constitution was badly crafted, it left loopholes which would have ended up in conflict. And I remember as the first year at the London School of Economics, my government, my, my government lecturer, Mr. Pantabrik, had been a member of the of the commission which drafted that at uh, Lancaster House in London. Yes, that, that uh, ordinance. Called, called, and uh, he asked me uh, as a, an exercise, you know, he liked it, a tutorial exercise to write about the Ugandan constitution, and I really wrote. <laughs> I said, these people don't know what that country is. And he said, son, can you move? I was one of the people. <laughs> I said, I, 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 as a young man, I said, uh, now I will never make it. But the constitution were, had inherent conflict and inherent contradiction. That brought the crisis that we went through in the mid-60s. Then, of course, uh, the conflict of, uh, of, of, of uh, ideological conflict, West and East, also played in. And as we tried to be independent in a, in a non-aligned movement, we were seen as, a, uh, as people to be attracted. Mm -hmm. And it rendered our government to be overthrown. And if you know, the, everybody knows that the 18 points read by uh, um, Achima, Richard Achima? Achima? No, no, it was by... by uh, Aswa. Aswa was actually, Captain Aswa. Uh, Captain Aswa was actually drafted by Davis, who was at the Institute of... He was the director. The director of... Uh, That's it, I mean, 18 points? Yes, mm. the first one. So, we, we, we had those conflicts. Then later, of course, when I mean took over, he started to win them. He was welcomed in the West until he also revolted against them. But let me say this. We were, we were prepared, I think, to move. And as uh, uh, my colleague has said, we were looked at uh, with Ghana uh, as the countries in Africa which we are going to move. <coughs> Let me tell you, if you read uh, Lee Kuan Yew's book, they are going to come here to see how we were doing. Yeah. Yes. We were like, the examples. We're role models. Right. We role were models. the model. Right. Okay. And the way we moved, we were going to move in the right direction. Yeah, right. And the statistics do support that direction. Ambassador Chema, I mean, both of you, uh, I recognize you both come from the Uganda People's Congress. At, at some, well, you actually both belong to the Uganda People's Congress. Yeah. But it's also believed that Uganda's problems can date back 1966, that crisis. Is that something you would agree with? And, uh, I think, I, I think, I, I think uh, Yona put it correctly. It, it, it dates before that. But let, let me just add something to what he said about the Constitution, the 62 Constitution. You see, the 62 Constitution was a compromise. It was uh, something in arithmetic, like it was the, the, the lowest common denominator. You see, during the negotiations, I think it was at Lancaster House, Lancaster, Lancaster, Lancaster House. House. You, see, you see, there was still a, a move, I think, Buganda had still wanted independence outside Uganda. Yes. And uh, the compromise was... Um, was um, the federal constitution. In fact, the, the, that 62 constitution was federal vis-a-vis -vis Buganda only. Yes. Not really. You see, the other kingdoms, they, at best, they were quasi.
Because I can dance. Quasi federal state. The status <coughs> of uh, Ankole, Toro, <coughs> Bunyoro, and then Bosoga territory. Th those were really quasi federal state, enjoyed quasi federal status. The only kingdom which had a federal status in under the 6 2 constitution was Buganda. And uh, Prime Minister of Botem and uh, the Kabaka's government were able to, to, you see, to, to agree on this 6-2 this, uh, constitution <coughs> in order for Uganda to achieve independence as one political entity. So I think one must always bear that in mind. Well, let's look at 1966. Did it have to happen? Did it have to happen? Let me come to that. Undertake a coup. Now, so it is happening. you see, the, the, the root cause of that 66 crisis was the referendum in 64. You see, this was included in 62 constitution that two years after independence, the new government would hold a referendum on these so-called lost, lost counties, yes. Boyaga and uh, Gangaisi. Gangaisi. With the benefit of the it was unfair. You see, the British would have resolved this problem before they left. Because these two, in fact, they were actually more than two, <coughs> these two counties were given, they, belonged, they were originally part of Buga, Bunyoro Kingdom. Because of the support the British got from uh, Boganda during the process of uh, colonization. Yes. All right. So these were like a reward. They should have resolved this matter before independence. In fact, the, this problem was created the British. They should have solved it. I think to leave it to a new government, a new, a, a, a new, a, a new government, and then to make it worse, at its, by, by N64, Saido Mutesa, the Kabaka of Uganda, was now the president of Uganda. So as it happened, when the referendum took place, the two countries voted to join the Euro. Now, which meant that Parliament had to amend the Constitution because all the boundary districts were in the schedule of the Constitution. So Parliament amended the Constitution to now include those two counties as part of Bunyoro. All right. Now the final... Uh, 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 looks like we're unable to nail the... No, no. You see, see, the nail on the see, see no, just, like, just, uh, just a minute. See, the, the, the president... The, the president... The president... The issue is, would it have been avoided? You see, the president... If, has, if the two, the two uh, parties... Had been able to agree. Mm. Had been able to agree, or would have listened to each other. Mm. But it could have been avoided. You see, you, know, you see, the bottleneck was this, that the president was to assent that bill. So he didn't. You see, you see because he was, he was, he's an interested party. Of course. He said part of his kingdom is, is being chopped to give to another, another, another kingdom. Right. And then, as he, because he was carrying two hats, he was the Kabaka, he was also president. Exactly, yes. So he refused to sign to ascend that, that bill. So they right. come back to parliament. Okay. Well, listeners, this is Petra Moradio on tonight. What else were you going to after marking the Golden Jubilee? How do we move forward, considering the past and our desired destiny? Our guests, Honorable Yona Kanyomozi, former minister in Obote II's government, Obote ruled twice, 765, 66 to one, and then at 1780 uh, to 85 because he was overthrown by his own troops. He's also a former Ugandan representative of the South African Parliament, retired Ambassador Harold Chema, former Ugandan diplomat. He's uh, now a consultant on international affairs, but he belongs to the Uganda People's Congress Party. We now have an NRM Mapa man in the house. That's Honorable Mike Sebal, Ugandan representative of the South African Legislative Assembly. With all fame. That's really <laughs> That's the fact. I agree. I've been black with some color yellow. Honorable Sebal, you're welcome to Spectrum. We've not seen you for a while. Talk to us about the roots of Uganda's crisis. 1966 is very briefly and tell us if you think we've learned our lessons and uh, how the NRM can shift gears and move us forward. Uh, thank you very much um, Edmond. I, I want to, to salute my senior colleagues uh, who are panelists this evening and I want to say good evening to all listeners out there. I want to congratulate you upon uh, making 50 as a nation and uh, as citizens I think it is something to write home about. Uh, 50 years is quite uh, a period of time. Uh, personally, at a personal level, uh, this is the, 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 the most important independence celebration that I've had in my life uh, because I'm a post-independent 
I'm a post-independence uh, Ugandan. Okay. Uh, I was born in 1964, so I was not there at independence. So to have been part of this celebration is something that uh, I cherish and value as a citizen of Uganda. And uh, it went on well. Those of you that were in Kololo, I think it was worth the uh, celebration. They still jump. Yeah, they still jump. Great now, yeah, right. regarding where we've come from, and definitely we, we, we've made a long journey as a nation. There are serious achievements that, that need to be acknowledged, uh, like uh, Prime Minister Obote did receive the instruments of power, uh, transport of power from the colonial government to the independent Ugandan government. It is an achievement at that level. And I want to say that he began well, definitely began well. And uh, the two or so years were years of hope from the history that I read. And I want to agree with my colleagues regarding uh, the, 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 the way Uganda was viewed at the time. Mm. Uganda was viewed as a very progressive country with a lot of hope. It was one of those countries that were seen that were going to shape uh, the destiny of Africa as a whole. It was quite, it had immense potential. It had a very well educated uh, uh, class of Ugandans uh, and definitely it, it was seen as a country that was going to make a lot of leap. Now, I do also agree uh, that there were some contradictions in the independence constitution. But I think where the problem comes in 1966 and where our founding uh, president, Milton Obote, in my view, made a big mistake. I agree with the analysis they have given, but that was a political problem, in my view, that needed a political solution. True. Other than using a political solution... A military solution. Used, no, no, no. I'm yes. saying other than using a political solution, he, a he opted for a military solution. Now, that is the beginning of militarizing Uganda's politics, and in my view, that's where the problem emanated that have affected us for the rest. You know, we, we, we went into a, a, a cycle of uh, violent change of power from one regime to another, but that was the, the source. And in my view, had uh, the Prime Minister then or the President used the politics, I mean, we could have had, be it referendum, be it anything of political nature, maybe Uganda's political path would not have taken uh, the, 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 the path, path it right. did. All right. So my, my take yes. is that that is the source, so the nexus. that is the genesis All right. of the checkered but history who, who that we've, for true that we've, uh, we, 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 we've, uh, we've um, gone through as, as a country. This is Petra I'm already want to go for a break. We'll be back. Do stay tuned. MTN, everywhere you go. Bank of Uganda informs the public that it has issued a 1,000 shillings commemorative coin. This is to celebrate the 50th independence anniversary of the Republic of Uganda. The coin is legal tender effective 9th October 2012. It will be used for day-to-day -day cash transactions. It is round and bears two colors, gold in the center and silver in the outer ring. The front of the coin depicts the crested crane as the main attraction. The back, the 
depicts the national coat of arms as the main feature. The coin will reach the public through the banking system and normal cash transactions. There is therefore no arrangement for exchange at Bank of Uganda offices in Kampala or upcountry branches and currency centers. Bank of Uganda is proud of its contribution to Uganda's economic success through prudent monetary policy management over the years. We join the rest of Uganda in celebrating the 50th independence anniversary with the commemorative coin as a lasting reminder of this historic event. Management Bank of Uganda. The Woolworths Quality Sale is now on. Get up to 40% of selected fashion clothing at Woolworths Metroplex Mall, Northern Bypass, Nalia and Garden City Shopping Centre, Lower Kololo. But hurry or you'll miss out. Woolworths, the difference. As we celebrate 50 special years, Nile Special invites you to toast to our great land. Nile Special, the rich, rewarding taste from the source. You've earned it. When I see from the Nile. Not for sale to persons under 18. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back to Spectrum. Spectrum on Radio and tonight on Spectrum. What else for Uganda after marking the Golden Jubilee? How do we move forward considering the past and our desired destiny? Our guests, my Honorable Yona Kanyomozi, former Minister in Milton Obote's government and uh, former representative of the South African Parliament. Honorable Mike Sibalu, current Ugandan representative of the South African Parliament, also a member of the ruling NRM's uh, NEC, that's the National Executive Committee. A retired Ambassador Harold Achema, former Ugandan diplomat, now a consultant on international affairs, a member of the UPC. But you will be able to call in and contribute to this discussion tonight. What about you, Nakanyo Mozik? How's the present present seven is government? Uh, why, why do you think it should change gears? Why has it gone wrong that it really needs to make a shift there? I, one thing is that uh, they also started well <laughs> in the manner that uh, mm. Mike Sabaru has said. They also started well, but uh, they got. Uh, they, 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 they mixed politics with the administration and that created a bit of a problem. Uh, the LRC or uh, RRC as at the beginning. And then the overstaying in power is another problem. Then the issue of, my, of, of the party, not realizing that the movement was actually a party and then suppressing the other people from coming up. So it, it made the tensions. Uh, and with the background of military, it also affected the way things are run on the, on the, on, 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 to the ordinary people. What do you mean? Because the military is trained to protect the boundaries, us, the boundaries and the enemies. The, that's the role of the military is protect us against the enemy. Yes, or enemies. And the police are protect our rights and, and, and freedoms so that between ourselves we don't get confused. When they're too much, you get into problems. Have they matched? Yes. <laughs> we have had uh, two inspector generals of police. Uh, exactly, they're military okay. generals. They're generals. And uh, I'm sure the people who went to the to the, the black mamas, most of them were not police. But some people have said uh, this is sort of problem because the, 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 the times we live in, we live in times of terrorism. So you know, internally, mm -hmm. terrorists. So there was no terrorist Saturday high court, <laughs> if I can remind you, and there are no terrorists on the, on the street. These are all the Ugandans demanding their rights. And I always feel that if these people are left, I mean, the mayor, the road mayor of Kampala couldn't welcome visitors to his city in which he's a mayor. He might have wanted to throw a party in the mayor's garden. He wasn't. <laughs> but the idea was there riding on horseback. We saw in town. Even if he did, he wanted to throw his own party. 
in the mayor's gardens. It wouldn't have did that. You could only do it at home. From going to where? To Kololo. Right. Ugandans were actually anxious about this 50 years. Yeah. So not only Mike Sabaro, even me, I, 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 I'm involved with Kampala Club. We have had nearly a week of celebration. Is yes, yeah. there? But they could not hold celebrations that are in the outlying towns, yeah. Gulu, Mbali, and so on. Yeah. They were outlawed. They, 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 but they are going, they, 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 They'll do them later. There are going to be subsequent. All right. So next next week. So, where <coughs> did we, I think the issues were the, the, the understanding of politics of this nation, that we are definitely, an open, we want an open society. We want right. like open society. Two was what I would call Mr. De parroting the Washington consensus on economic development. Right. The IMF led down. Yeah, yeah, the IMF. 87. And, and uh, World Bank. World Bank. And the issue of uh, <laughs> neoliberalism that crippled us. And we parroted those things without knowing the implications. And now we're trying, for example, trying to work track on that. Yes. Have, for example, when they said privatization, to us it means to say everything. <laughs> and we saw the Richard Kaijuka, I remember him in Kacheka Stadium in Barara. Yeah. He's just been appointed to New Calendar. He said, Mr. President, I'm going to sell everything that is movable. Yeah. I remember him saying. Yeah. Everything yeah. that's uh, everything, everything, everything must go like the Asians uh, traders used to do at, uh, in the old days before uh -huh. he was born. But at Christmas time, they have to sell everything. Put on labels. Everything must go. So everything went. And we did it. Not the one that the one we are opposed to privatization. <laughs> right. Because Kenya is privatizing and they were more capitalist ingrained than us. But they didn't celebrate. They did it with their own people. Mm -hmm. In our case we did it without For our own us. people. And it is made and what we realized from sale, nobody I'm not sure Mark We'll talk about that another time. That's a whole story. Where the money went. Where the money went. All These right. are the issues. Those pulled pulled us away okay. from the things we okay. should do. Alright. So you say the military we are actually militarizing conflicts by yes. putting them in police. Yes. You think we're militarizing doing something that yes. kind of sixty six. Yeah. Ambassador Achema, do you think we've learned our lessons from independence, independence failure? And why do you think the NRM should really change? I, I, I don't think we have learned much. That is partly why I think the opposition party decided not to participate in the celebration just to really mark this occasion. You see, <coughs> the fact that um, two key members of the opposition, the president of the FDC, and the Lord Mayor of Kampala are right now under something called preventive arrest. Which a court denounced and said it's illegal. It is totally it is illegal, it is immoral. You see, freedom is what fundamentally we got in 1962. Freedom from colonial rule and oppression. Unfortunately, that freedom is still lacking. This is a classic example that we don't have our citizens, even the most senior people in this country, this country don't have freedom. Right. Let me say, tell you one thing. All growth is a result of freedom. Without freedom, you cannot grow. You will not. Really? You cannot grow properly. Well, Libya grew. They have one of the most robust economies. Well, see what is happening. a lot of freedom. You see what is that, what's happening now. There is going to be chaos and anarchy in Libya there for, was a for many minister, years. Now they are trying to find another. Freedom is priceless. If there is one thing which I would want Ugandans to insist on, it is their freedom. Freedom of association, freedom of speech, freedom of thought. Once you are free, afraid to think, then you will not progress. All right. Now the other thing, you know, let me just make maybe just one uh, thing which I, I always keep seeing in the papers and you know for the media. You see, 1962 October 9th, what the Duke of Kent gave to Prime Minister Bote are constitutional instruments. You see, I always see people writing constitutional power of uh, something. You know, also, yes, no. it's like an order and council from the, the British House of Commons, but technical name they are called constitutional instruments. That's what was presented to the Prime Minister on that day. Right. Now, the other thing which we have not learned is that the root causes of our problem are basically three. Ignorance, poverty, and disease. All right. 
without investing in education without investing in agriculture which is the backbone of the economy 80% of population lives on, agri on the land 85 exactly without investing in healthcare you know when, when I see Parliament getting stuck you know it, it is it is amazing right at African Union level all African countries have committed themselves to spending 15% of the budget we're spending just about nine uh, 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 it's too short too, too little <clears throat> however Mike Sabalo do you think we've laid a good foundation for the next 50 years and where do you think the NRM really should change even though you're wearing a yellow shirt mm -hmm. right <laughs> no I, I think um, first of all I, I want to, to make just a bit of comments on the, the issues my colleagues have raised it's about comments yeah minutes. because uh, Honorable Kanyomozi uh, has seen uh, one of the problems as uh, staying long in power. I don't think which that, you don't agree with. I don't think that is necessarily a problem. The president. I, I don't. The president uh, said I, so that African leaders. In '86. In '86, he recognized that, that, that was. He went along ahead to do <laughs> exactly that. But uh, Mr. Chairman, this one was. Yes, I sir. gave them a very good part of yeah. other things. Yeah. So because I've parts. really seen a country like Tanzania. Uh, the, 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 that long spell that Mualim took charge of the nation helped to have an integrated Tanzania. One people, it, it is in that process that he was able to integrate and create the spirit of a Tanzanianness. You know, find them that Swahili thing and all that. So, it, this idea of thinking that staying long is a problem, it is not. Actually, it is problem. not a problem, is a but there could be contradictions. Mm -hmm. You can use it to go well and build a very good foundation. Even Kenya went through the same process. That time of uninterrupted, and they were able to really lay a good foundation. Under Daniel Arap Moy. No, if, even the, the, the Kenyatta time. Kenya didn't stay that so, long. So, 63 to 78, only 15 years. Th that is not a short time by, by my definition. That's a long time. Yeah, that is long. And he, he left by... Death. Yes, it not was natural, God natural, God. yeah. But he, he did good work. So let's not look at longevity as necessarily a problem. I wanted to qualify that because even when you put the the two UPC together, that was not a particularly very short. <laughs> now, regarding the another fourth prime regarding the, the boycott, I think let's not use some of these things. You know, some of these are not really good qualifications. You see. Opposition also goes with responsibility, dignity, and decorum. Yes. I respect Yona Kanyumos. He's a member of the opposition, but he's one of the people I've seen who opposes with logic and objectivity. And on a number of occasions, we've agreed, like on the issue of East African integration, there was a point where all opposition people were looking at it from the lens of uh, President Museven. And they were not looking at the strategic objective of integration, but he stood out of the crowd and looked at the principle of integration. So let's look at opposition with a touch of objectivity, decorum, and dignity. You don't want them sitting in ditches because, for any reason? No, because w when you have 50 years and someone deliberately wants to create a situation uh, that makes it, uh, uh, that, that wants to spoil the party. Well, he was not fresh fruit. Deliberately. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 no, you you see, him from even coming to you, 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 you see, you see, those are now secondary. Yeah. I'm just saying, my my point is very clear. Let's have objectivity we have in, in these matters. All right. And, and from the viewpoint of the leaders All right. of opposition, let's hear from the list. Now, the foundation, definitely the NRM has laid the foundation. You made that point very clear. The peace is, is quite something we need to appreciate. The, 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 the territorial integrity of this country called Uganda is something we need uh, to, to, to appreciate. Uh, we have no We've even expected no, to power to the people. <laughs> taking power to the people. <laughs> the people you mean you know, the elected, I don't know how many times right. this time round. We we so what we need, but what, what we need to, to work on, yes, which I really objectively think we yes. really need to work 
on is Terminate. the issue of, uh, of of corruption. We have to go the, 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 some of those aspects we'll we really need right. to clear right. those right. areas that are still corrupt, right. so that then resources uh, are, are optimally right. utilized right. to enhance the welfare of the people. Let's hear from the listeners. This is Petrol on Radio on tonight. What else? Uh, for Uganda after marking the Golden Jubilee. How do we move forward? Considering the past and our desired destiny, our number is 0414 When you call in, please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Spectrum, hello? Hello. Yes, sir, your name? I'm um, Mr. Karuna. Yeah. Katrum. So, Five years ago, I talked about to people in the how they have to with the constitution. And honorable, I mean, I'm talking about that one. And that time, my kids, the food was in standard day six. But they have to read and read. And so that our problem in Uganda is rushing to sign the constitution of 1960. Secondly, what we want, but just from the opposition, they were born with after 70. They don't know what we need to do. <laughs> Very please, Mr. Kalimanda, go back and lecture them. Two of them, some of them are alive to talk with lawyers, some of them are doctors. Thank you very much. <laughs> Spectrum, hello. Uh, this is Alex in Bali. Yes, Alex in Bali. Uh, what I would like to about the independence is that uh, it was only one man, the late Dr. Apollo Milton Obote, who made many of us the peasants and the many Ugandans cherish independence. Okay. Because we, we, we in the villages, we only knew three things. We knew Christmas, independence, and compassion today. Yeah, look how far it is today. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this comes about because the current leadership has not taught us how to be patriotic. But if the main opponent to the country is the one who made us love our country, make his memory, be remembered. Wonderful. The patriotism does get status. Spectrum, hello. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, your name? Thanks for the to the studio. Give me the name. I, I want to disagree with uh, Mr. Ferraro. Uh, in the last 26 years, our society has become so polarized. Reason being, we have a new class of rich people of 1986. Many parts of this country have been marginalized. Talk about political education there, health service there, and therefore, those people will not have opportunities ahead of time to have a claim on their country. So for you to see, and think that this is the year of which uh, the ruling party has had 26 years is good for Uganda, you need to go back on the drawing board and make sure that we bring all the other Ugandans who are marginalized. You know, Uganda is ruled by a small clique, a small family. Revise on that, I think the next two years will be good for us. Good evening. Interesting perspective there. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Good evening, my friend. Your name again? Happy <laughs> Uhuru. <laughs> yes, Peter. Because I think in this country, if we are not careful, could have been cast in one or another. Because we have had enough of crisis from which we would learn. Now, so if we have clocked 50 years, we would have seen a new beginning, another 50. Continuation, real, real, genuine unity and nationalism. And this would have been reflected in the speeches and all the things that have been done. But I don't see any hope that has been given to this country. We are still in the quagmire of the 66 crisis. I think. Peter, I've lost you there. I really would have loved to hear you conclude that. You can still call back in, Peter Mboga. Spectrum Mala? Hello? Yes, your name? Ready, one? Yes, sir, your name? This is my name. Thank you for that nice opinion. Yep. Hello? Yes, you can. You live on air. Yes. As we celebrate 60 years of independence, Uganda is not independent at all. Because it's not that uh, you can have some dignitaries from outside when the citizens of Uganda are under house arrest. I thank you very much. Our last caller, Spectrum, hello? Hello? 
Hello? Your name? We've lost you. Uh, okay. Let's take our final caller. Spectrum, hello? Good evening, your name? I'm called here in point from Tinder. Yes. I want to be uh, I also want to salute the president Ali and his uh his greatness because as a country we are heading somewhere. Thank you. All right. Honorable Kanyamazi. Yes. You can give your responses to some of this. Well, first, uh, first, uh, <coughs> Katulamu was uh, agreeing with us on the, uh, the difficulties of the Constitution, mm -hmm. 1862, so they don't have uh, much. A person from Bali, for sure, the, 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 the foundation that Obote had laid would have pushed us very far. Patriotism. The, the patriotism, looking at independence, Christmas, and the COP day. In fact, you are Minister for Cooperatives yes, in the 80s. And, 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 so credit and, for him. And, and the, the, the cooperatives were the thing that were moving the peasantry. Absolutely. Their life. Three, there is the problem with inequality. You know the gap between our classes. But there's also a problem with cooperatives. The only place where we have cooperatives working, they are opposition people. Do you think they are good for us? You are not opposition. Well, the only cooperatives that survive in their opposition. They have a lot of money, now they go into the opposition. Those are the people, not the opposition. The, 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 people, the people are just, it's like the private sector, the, the casitas and others. So they, 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 they are looking at the, the interests of the peasantry or the ordinary people of Uganda uh, can best be served in cooperatives yes. in any country. That's true. Not only in Uganda. All right. Three, the, 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 the service delivery. You built up services like UP. You and me don't wish our kids, my grandchildren, and your children, and my surveillance children cannot go to UP schools. God forbid. Exactly. What type of policy is that? Which which discriminates? I, I, we, the, the UPC had in the uh, you know, uh, manifesto, chapter six, I think. We had the UPE. We wanted UPE, mm -hmm. and you, you, is it US? US. USA. 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 But we were going to do it separately. So we started on expanding the schools before the, the government moved us out, mm -hmm. and also the training the colleges to do this, so that the people are in place when the system starts. All right. This one is not there. Okay. Then the, 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 <coughs> there is an issue. The, this man had started on an issue, but he didn't develop it. So I, can't, I, I didn't get it okay. very well. All right. But these are the issues. All right. The fact that the inequality is increasing, service delivery is very poor, there is a click of, of a rulers, and the, to answer indirectly my friend, we can't say we are beginning to have unity when we are disintegrating the country yes. along tribal lines with this Honorable um, uh, Ambassador Harald yes. yes. your responses. Uh, well, my, I think most of the um, callers made very <coughs> uh, positive, constructive um, uh, points. I, I want to 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 supplement what Honorable Kanyamo has just said. You see, the biggest challenge we have today in Uganda and also in Africa is leadership. Good leadership is lacking. Leadership by example. And I think if there's any legacy uh, President Obote left, it is that. You see, if you're a leader, it's not what you say which matters, it is your actions. Your actions always speak louder than you. You can say the sweetest things. You can denounce corruption. You can denounce, say, zero to tolerance on corruption. You can denounce sectarianism. You can denounce you, you, uh, religious intolerance. You can say you are the strongest supporter of rule of law. But what you do says much more than what, whatever you say. Now, the other thing which I would want to, to say is, is, is about, you see, it is tied to what, what some, one of the callers say, polarization of Uganda. Yes. You see, Uganda is a British project. 
there was no Uganda before 1894. The idea of Uganda is a colonial project, which we have accepted willingly in 62. Is it a good thing? Would you dip? It's a very good thing. I support it. And you see, you see, if there is one thing you can give Obote credit for, <coughs> Obote had commitment okay. to Uganda as a country, as an idea. You see, that, that, that Uganda project is not being undermined. You see, when you create 140 districts, oh, you see, we need fewer districts. Still going. No, you see, this is dividing. You are now dividing the country. All right. And all these little units are constantly fighting each other. Okay. Now you come up with something called uh, uh, patriotism clubs. They are not building the best in state house, a very serious position. Is it? It's yes. just you to, to disorganize that. Let's hear from more of Mike Sibala. Our time is almost up. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, what is interesting is that uh, my colleagues don't seem to see anything good out of. No, 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 we, that's not true. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, that's why I've used the word sim. So if you have, then I, I'm choosing the words very <laughs> So, but, but I think uh, we, we just need to uh, to appreciate what has been done and be able to build on it. Uh, there is a colleague, Alex, did indicate that uh, uh, President Obote is the one who showed love, patriotism, and he mentioned the days, and all those days are positive. But I want to remind him that there was also uh, that day when Ruvidi was attacked. It represented a totally different dimension to a great section of this country. So all of these are uh, things we need to look at. And the most important thing to learn from them is to ensure that they don't come back. It's not to gross over them. So, so we, we have to get these things and ensure that we don't have them uh, again. Now, when you talk about reconciliation, it takes two to tango. Reconciliation is on both sides. The opposition must be willing to take an olive uh, a branch that is given. Likewise, government must give that. So if you are being objective, then you look at it from both sides. Because if we are celebrating 50 years and some section of the people deliberately want to disrupt, uh, then I think uh, the definition of reconciliation <laughs> is flawed. Uh, then uh, there were also issues of um, yeah, you know, UPE. Say, do we agree it is a good uh, principle? All right. Yes, it is. Okay. And it begins with quantitative right. and it progressively moves right. to qualitative. To Th that is where right. I want us to move. Our it is a good principle. Let's improve it by doing Our the ABCD. So, I, I think we've done, we've moved a long journey. Let's take lessons. The ARM has made its contribution. Right. Let's build on those. Right. Where there are mistakes, let's identify them and recollect them. Well, but the history of Uganda definitely can never be rewritten without the NRM. Well, it has played quite a similar part of it. Without Milton Obote and Lydia So you're saying, the opposition should be really behaved like Matthias Mpuga. He starts the fire and then stays at home. He's never been arrested even once. He stays at home in the same <laughs> We have to go. Thank you very much, Ladia. Sorry, but you're not Former minister in the body to government. Also, former Ugandan representative of the East African Parliament. Sorry, but Mike Sebalu, current representative of the Ugandan East African Parliament. Also, member of the NRM Party, defending it very passionately. Retired yeah? <laughs> Ambassador Harold Echema, former Ugandan diplomat, was a diplomat for about 30 years. He's now a consultant on international affairs, coming from the UPC Party. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chisto, from No Party. Spectrum returns tomorrow up next is the news in English. Open an ice cold Nile gold, but don't drink it just yet. Take a closer look.